You've all heard of the F-150 Lightning, the Tesla Cybertruck, and the Rivian R1T. They're basically the three horsemen of the modern EV landscape. However, in what is arguably North America's biggest vehicle market, it's only the first wave, and they definitely won't be the last, and technically they're not even the first. Some of these trucks you might have heard of, but probably not all of them. And the first one on the list is the Alpha Wolf. And aside from having an incredibly cringe name, this truck actually has quite a lot going for it. This thing is clearly designed around hardcore off-roading and rock crawling, and it's the debut vehicle of Alpha Motors Corporation, one of the many EV startup companies that have sprung up during this golden age of electric vehicle development. They estimate between 200 to 300 miles of range, which is actually a pretty reasonable target, it has a two-door extended and full double cab version planned, and a towing capacity listed of 6,700 pounds. Pricing-wise, they estimate somewhere around 46,000 for the base model and up to 66,000 for the top trim before options. And unfortunately, there's no word on clearance or departure or approach angles, battery tech, or charging. But being clearly designed for off-road use, I don't think the numbers will be disappointing. Especially with those massive tires, those have to at least be 35s. As a new company, a jury's still out on if they'll make it to production, but if you're into the idea of EV overlanding, this is definitely one to keep an eye on. Second one on the list is the Lordstown Endurance. <laughs> Some of you may know this one, and it's likely to be the most recognizable one on the list. For a long time, many thought this company to be a scam and they do have some questionable history but no they actually managed to make it production believe it or not barely it was pretty mass spec wise had a 109 kilowatt hour battery an 11 kilowatt onboard charger and capable of 150 kilowatts dc fast charging had towing capacity of 8,000 pounds with an onboard payload capacity of only 1,050 pounds the endurance's unique selling point was that it actually used in wheel hub motors instead of a normal electric motor however the specs of this truck just they weren't that great despite a large battery battery, it only had an estimated range of 174 miles as rated by the EPA. And that would almost be palatable if the price didn't start at $65,000. Not that you can buy one anyways, as after only delivering six vehicles, the company got into a dispute with one of their primary partners, and the whole company immolated into bankruptcy. Apparently 500 units had been assembled, and at least some of them had been spotted in a random parking lot. All hope is not lost, as through the company's bankruptcy proceedings, the original founder purchased the assets back, so a resurrection of Lordstown is actually not out of the cards. And the third one on the list is the Bollinger B2. One of the most instantly recognizable trucks because of its shape, whereas a lot of EV design nowadays is curved for aerodynamic reasons. Bollinger said F that and actually went hard in the other direction and basically made a box on wheels. Whereas other EV trucks go the extra mile for cabin comfort, aesthetics, and design, the Bollinger B2 is very Spartan. It's all about maximizing space, durability, and utility. And one of the most fascinating features is the complete end-to-end -end pass through from the front trunk all the way through through to the rear, you can literally crawl through the truck. Spec-wise, not much is known about the truck, but they were originally aiming for a 614 horsepower, 200 miles of range, 7,500 pound towing capacity, and an absolutely massive 5,000 pounds onboard payload. A while back, Bollinger actually canceled the B2 truck to focus on commercial vehicles, but recently they actually revived the program and the B2 is back on the menu. The price is where things start to get questionable. The original stated price was specced at $125,000 to start. But to be fair, a lot of time has passed in between their original version and now, so the EV landscape has matured a lot in that time. So it'll be interesting to see what their updated pricing is. Fourth one on the list is the Canoe electric pickup. And now we go to the other extreme of design, the most rounded pickup truck ever. It's actually bigger than it looks. It's got a full four by six foot illuminated bed and can actually be extended to eight feet long. The sides fold out for access and overall, this thing is a lot more truck than it looks at first glance. It has a payload capacity of 1,800 pounds and a tow rating of 7,000. 1,700 pounds, 500 horsepower, 200 miles of range, and because the wheels are pushed into the four corners, it'll actually have a great departure and approach angle, although the ground clearance does leave something to be desired at only 6.3 inches. They say the price will start at $35,000, but we'll have to see how accurate that is. It supports up to 150 kilowatt charging, and based on the slower charging times listed for level two, it looks like it has around an 80 kilowatt hour battery. Canoe as a company isn't profitable yet, but through some contracts with the US military and some others, hopefully they'll actually manage to see this truck to production. Fifth one on the list is the Tello electric truck. So we've talked about full-size electric trucks. Let's size all the way down to the Tello, a micro pickup that'll be the same size as a Mini Cooper SE. It's only 152 inches long. Despite such a compact form factor though, you've actually got four seats in the cabin because you're pushed up so far forward with no front trunk. And despite the Tello size, if you fold the mid gate down, you actually have four by eight feet of bed length to work with without needing to drop the tailgate. And if you have the mid gate up, it's only five feet. It even has a rear 
Rivian inspired gear tunnel. And surprisingly enough, it's no slouch when it comes to hauling either, with a targeted 1,600 pound onboard payload capacity and 6,600 pound towing capacity. It actually has a humongous 106 kilowatt hour battery pack strapped underneath, giving it 300 miles of range. It's got 500 horsepower, 27 inch tires, and 10 inches of ground clearance. This thing actually grew on me a lot while I was researching this video. I kind of want one. This is a new company, so we'll have to see how the company handles hitting production, but at least the price is pretty reasonable and realistic, stated to be about $50,000 to start. The sixth one on the list is the Fisker Alaska. Yep, that's Fisker, the same EV company that's been around for a while and has been rather touch and go with their long-term survivability, but they actually recently announced their own pickup truck model. And seeing as they're actually starting to deliver their ocean SUV to customers, there's some hope that they'll gradually expand and be able to use what they've learned in manufacturing to kickstart the Alaska production line. It states it'll start at $45,400, has a 4.5 foot bed that can be maxed out to 9.2 feet if you fold down the mid gate and the rear seats. And it'll come in two battery pack sizes, a 75 kilowatt hour getting 230 miles of range and 113 kilowatt hour pack getting 340 miles of range. They say it has a towing capacity of 8,000 pounds, but no word on onboard payload capacity. And it'll come with either 20 inch or 22 inch wheels with an estimated ground clearance of eight inches based on the ladder. And the last one on the list, the Ford Ranger EV. We've talked a lot about the future, but let's wind the clock back. The F-150 Lightning was not actually Ford's first fully electric truck. Over 20 years before the Lightning was a thing, they made the Ford Ranger EV from 1998 to 2002. The first model used a 22 kilowatt hour lead acid battery before very quickly switching to a 26 kilowatt hour nickel metal hydride pack. And of all the trucks on this list, this is the only one that's not all wheel drive, unfortunately. It was rear wheel drive only and only had a 90 horsepower motor. Now keep in mind, this is back when electric vehicles were in their infancy and mostly experimental. And believe it or not, this thing actually had regen braking. The NIMH versions had a real world range of 65 miles, and for its time, this was actually a pretty forward looking EV. It had battery preconditioning for winter conditions, and is one of the first electric vehicles to use the initial version of the J1772 charging standard. It's an older standard and looks nothing like the modern J1772 adapter, but it basically uses the same wires and just needs an adapter to work with modern J1772 stations. Despite being older battery tech, to this day there's still actually a few Ranger EVs out there still using their original battery pack 20 odd somewhat years later, although significantly degraded. And there's actually an extremely active community on Facebook dedicated to ownership and repairs of these things, including rebuilding the battery packs and even doing conversions to modern lithium ion and LFP chemistries. It's really cool. I think I'd actually like to get a hold of one of these as a project truck and a showpiece and make a neat, if somewhat limited, overlanding build to help preserve a piece of EV history. It's definitely an interesting time to be an EV enthusiast, and if you want to see me take EVs and electric rideables out camping and exploring, click the card. 